So, hell of a weekend. Yeah? First we had Endgame. We shed some tears there. Now we have the Battle of Winterfell. We also shed some tears. Well, I guess especially me. For one character. <laughs> A drink for you. So let's get on to episode 3 of the 8th season of Game of Thrones. And welcome to the most controversial episode ever. Welcome to the last Jedi of Game of Thrones. Holy moly, where shall I start? Where shall I start? Well, for me, I don't have any nitpicking with all those plot armors. Or why did that character kill that? Or why that character doesn't have any bigger arc or history or whatever. I'm just a simple guy when it comes to entertainment, especially in movies or TV. I just want to see big battles, short fights, horses charging, enemies get killed, a lot of bloodshed, and epic music, um, emotional scenes, thrilling scenes, captivating moments, and a big, big climax. And this is what I want. I'm a simple guy, I see battle, I watch it, and I enjoy it at the end. I lean myself back a little to enjoy this review. And everybody, just 80%, 70% of the reviews I read or other reviewers telling about that episode, all are most negative. Everybody just praises how good this, this battle was. How was it shot? How was, it, how was the epic, the battles? And the, all the negativity comes to the plot holes and especially for the... For the Arya killing the Night King. Why is it Arya? What what about the Night King? Why it doesn't have any any dialogue whatsoever? What is his story? Why didn't we find out his arc? Why are you all obsessed with with the story or your theories about one certain character? It's all this bullshit of Snoke. Why did Snoke die and before that Jedi? Everybody just had those theories, theory videos. Oh, this must be him, or this must be him, or Snoke. It, it seriously, is Kylo Ren's grandmother. Who cares? I don't care. He's the bad guy. Just kill him. It's like the Emperor in the old trilogy of Star Wars. Nobody heard about him before, and then he comes... In the Return of the Jedi, he talks a little. Yeah, show me your your anger and join me. Take your father's side. And that way that kills him and that's the end. And we all woo celebrate that he's dead. If you know one character is a bad guy, I don't need any backstory. I know Hitler was bad. I know Osama Bin Laden was bad. I know Erdogan is bad. So just kill that guy. I don't care how was his childhood. He was a beat in his childhood. He didn't grow up with, with toys or whatsoever. We know he's dead. Just kill him and get over it. I'm not really celebrating the end of Avengers or Game of Thrones or Star Wars. But I'm celebrating that all you... Uh, your worst, the worst kind of the internet nowadays is the the theory guys, the theory channels. So always making videos about the theory, 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 and when this theory doesn't get confirmed, everything is just bullshit. So I'm glad that these three big franchises is ending that that year, and now. You don't have any theory videos to do, or maybe you will find any theories about oh, what happened with the prequel series of Game of Thrones. What's going on about the next chapter of Game of Thrones, uh, Star Wars? I mean, or what's or what other shows? I don't care. And now they they are scared because they have to find out to do some original thing, starting from scratch. But I don't can't do this. I'm not intelligent or or, I don't know, creative enough to do something. I just need to make my theory videos to be, to swim on safe waters. Some reviewers out there must stop theorizing and get a life. 
stop using Game of Thrones or Star Wars or whatever entertainment as an excuse for your life or an excuse to live for. These things are not important enough to take so much time of you, to spend so much time and give it so much time and when everything doesn't come to plan as you expected, it's it's bullshit. I know we all, most of us are in the position where our life are a little shitty, it's not that we're expecting for, we're going all to a 9 to 5 job and hate it, doesn't make any money or doesn't have a girlfriend, wife or kids, whatever, seeing other uh, assholes having more successful life and we have our distractions in movies and TV shows. And I can understand if these shows or movies also getting bullshitty, you think, oh, all my life is bullshit. So you cannot say that this episode is bullcrap for, for, for certain reasons. Just like, hey, in the, in the previous seasons when George R. Martin wrote it and they based upon the books and everybody just died. We had this big red wedding and all characters died and this was this surprising and the thing that that slipped away from other shows just like they don't go to the usual road so we have all always this surprising thing and we cannot have our safe heroes but now that this season doesn't uh, based on books by George R. R. Martin and the writers uh, just think okay we don't have to kill them all to have amazing and captivating storytelling you all getting nuts? Ah! What do you want, guys? What do you want? Do you want to to get seeing that your favorite characters just get died, so you can be satisfied with the with the result? You want to see Dennis die, John die, Brienne die, Tormund die, uh, Jamie Lannister die? No, they are too OP. It's like it's like the video game. All those are what level 100s and the knight or the undead or the enemies whatever type are just level 20 or 10s. So just scratching you a little bit but you cannot die because you are so OP. And also the t this episode was terrible because none of the major characters died. Theon died. Isn't he another major character? Jorah fucking Mormont died and his cousin Liana Mormont, the whole house Mormont just died. And you don't care about it? My favorite character Jorah Mormont died and I cried like a baby. But nobody cared about that. And it was a perfect way he died. I loved it. He died protecting the one he loves. And it, it was perfect. If he died on the on the wall or on, in the field or in, in Winterfell, well, it wasn't Winterfell, but when he died on the wall or on the stairs or wherever else, it doesn't have that epic uh, epic weight just like dying just for Daenerys, protecting her and giving his last breath and trying to keep her safe. This was a really manly, knightly way to die. portrayed Zora Mormon so fantastic and Liana Mormont also she saw that that zombie giant crosses through the gates of Winterfell just like he crossed before when the Boltons had Winterfell and he just bleh, hits Liana Mormont see wait fuck <laughs>
<laughs> will throw it away, but then she gets up, takes her last stand, takes all her courage, screams at the giant, the giant took her, crosses her a little bit, and then he just want to bite her or eat her whatsoever, and she just stabs the knife in his eye of the undead giant, and he just... <laughs> He just falls a thousand pieces, just like, like Eowyn in the Pelennor fields. So many throwbacks to Return of the King and and Helm's Deep. Well, all all this this battle, the most inspiration, of course, is to Helm's Deep, and yeah, that, 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 that was cool. And there's a one scene, especially in Helm's Deep, with the orc with the torch going down. <laughs> Uh, also a similar scene where the Night King rides his dragon and he spits his fire and the fire is so powerful that it breaks one piece of the entire wall of Winterfell and the undead just running into the, in, in the Winterfell and the way the, night, the undead army yeah, it reminds you a lot of World War Z, but it was just like a wave, not like in any other movie when the one army and the other army just smashing together and the first three lines fights. It was like just a gigantic wave over everyone, over Tormund, Brienne, Jamie, and I'm so glad they survived. It's just like in the Lord of the Rings movies. And you know, George R. R. Martin has a lot of inspiration of the of the talking books and so seriously guys do you want to see your favorite characters die do you want to see hey Kimli die Legolas die or Aragorn dies in the Helm's Deep no they all survive and you are and you go with it and this is the same way here I'm just so glad that my favorite characters didn't die two of my favorite characters Unfortunately, died with Jorah Mormont and Beric Dendarrion. He was also amazing, and the way he died, he just tries to save Arya because Arya has a still a mission in that episode, and he just stands there, hold on style, and protect her. Ah. <laughs> but there was no lore of light to bring him back. Speaking of lore of light. Melisandre comes into the battle. Yeah, the sea was one of the characters I also already forgot. I don't know. Is it just like she goes uh, the way when she escaped or uh, when she was banished from Winterfell? The way was going into the wall, and in on her way, she sees the gigantic army of the undead and so she thinks, okay, I'm going back. I'm going back to Winterfell. She has two awesome scenes with the when when she lights all the swords of the Dothraki army. That was cool and just like the domino effect. <laughs> Every the the whole night just got ignited. Zobria Issa says signal to ladies. That was cool, and the next 
scene from Alessandro was when she tried to to ignite the the trances because everything was so dark there was also a good tactic by the Night King in sending a gigantic avalanche of snow and or cloudy snow so you cannot see anything you even could not see your own hand in the darkness and, and the Daenerys couldn't see Davos waving with the torches to get the signal get the trances on fire but then a grey worm just thinks hey wait 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 uh, this, this red looking good woman just light before the swords let's try it again and she goes to the trances says a prayer with <laughs> all <laughs> Axios on your Elon Misa. Axios on your Elon Misa. Axios on your Elon Misa. Cool. That was also cool. So this episode always has these awesome moments, beautiful shot, the cinematic curve is beautiful, especially the scenes where the dragons, all three fighting, so the two dragons against the one with the Night King, flying over the clouds as the Man of Steel style, and they're over the clouds, and you see the, the big bright moon and the dragons is fighting in the air, you know, Danger Zone style Top Gun. <laughs> I think I, I talk really long enough of the movie, but the, at the beginning was this that me, annoys me, especially in this certain time of AIDS where we live now, when everyone has a mouth to say something and using their social media accounts as a way to get spread your words, but most of the time in negative, the times that just want to destroy someone. It's destroying lives as we've seen so many actors, especially the Asian actor of The Last Jedi. Oh, this, this, this age, this certain age of internet or social media is so toxic. I just hate it. I really hate it. And now you think, oh, it's only you do the same thing. Yeah, but most of the time I'm talking about positive things. I, I really hate it to talk negative about things, especially movies or TV shows, because there are so many people, they're putting so much effort to it, there are thousands, ten thousand of people, if you see especially the Avengers credits, you see so many names that they're putting their work, and if they're going out and you, they read comments about how shitty it was, and you're working on a project that takes years of your life, and then everybody is not entertained with it. Uh, everybody is disappointed. This 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 hits you hard. So I don't like criticism. I don't like nitpicking. I always love to, to talk positive, and maybe the world gets a little bit positiver. I hope, but I don't. I don't. I don't like to to nagging around. I, I'm not that kind of person. So I guess that's why I love Black Jedi. <laughs> so in the end, I thought the, the episode was awesome. I thought the battles was awesome. I don't have nothing that Arya killed the Night King in the good Assassin's Creed style. And the moves it did was uh, was also just like when, it, when it, she trained with Brienne or as we saw in Black Jedi. <laughs>
fuck? <laughs> but that was a cool moment. And okay. The other thing is why John didn't kill the Night King. I just expected a hand to hand combat. Sword to sword combat. Yeah, I just wanted also to see that. But in the end, it's not so bad that Arya killed him. And then again he just did his Look at me, John, I can do things. Ooh, raising all the all the undead. And also the undead in the crypt. Where all the Starks the Stark zombies just came out. And I thought in that moment really Will Sansa and Tyrion just get just doing suicide with their with their with their knives but with their daggers, but no, they're just fighting. Fight! Show me courage and fight. That was that was a beautiful scene. I, I still hope for a net Stark, so some bean zombie scene. <laughs> but yeah. And yeah, um, John didn't make the kill because he was pinned down by the dragon. And that was so Dark Souls style when you see a gigantic dragon and he's so OP and you are with a level 1. <laughs> I just can't go through to him. Uh, yeah, so, so, so in the end, I'm, I'm so entertained by this episode. People should have starting to lower the expectations and getting going to things, shows, movies, whatever, with a more open mind, and don't be a hater, guys, don't be a haters, there's so many people working to it, and we still have three episodes, so when you start then crying, oh, the show is over, well, it's your fault, <laughs> so, that was my review, uh, of episode 3, the Battle of Winterfell was amazing and I drink to the house Mormont again. We are not a large house, but we're a proud one. And every man from Bear Island fights with the strength of ten mainlanders. We stand tall. Or we stand... something. Bye bye cute bear. <laughs>